Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's session. Uh, my name is Sudhanshu, and I work as a strategic business development manager, and I've been with Adobe for around seven years. So today I'm going to uh, talk about how to automate and you know uh, the creation and manipulation of PDFs using PDF Services API. Now, PDF is very close to our day-to-day -day routine, right? Whatever we do, like when we wake up in the morning, right, we consume a lot of media, right? We start, you know, every one of us uh, watch something on the mobile device or consuming some media, watching advertisement, right? So we end up touching Adobe technology somewhere or other, right? And that's when, you know, we don't even realize, you know, we are actually using and consuming those technologies. And it's changing our lives, especially uh, the way COVID has impacted, you know, everyone, especially in terms of how we used to operate earlier and now how we are operating with the new model. So digital transformation has become a necessity to all of us, right? So it is really important to understand the technologies that we have that can be leveraged, right? And one of the technologies that I'm going to talk about today is PDF Services API and PDF Embed API. Now, this is the agenda, right? So in the interest of time, like we, I'll, I'll talk about the PDF Services API uh, for five minutes and then we'll uh, jump into PDF Embed API and then we'll, I'll show you how to access those API, right? Uh, once you want to get your hands dirty, you know, how to get those credentials, how to call those APIs, so I'll, I'll show you all that. And then in the end, I will show you a quick demo. So the takeaway from this session is you would have an understanding of PDF services and PDF embed API, where and how they can be used and how you can access them, right? Now, PDF services API, I'm sure you would have used Acrobat DC or you know you 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 would have tried playing uh, playing with a PDF file, right? So. I mean, one of the things that I personally have, I experience it on a daily basis is, you know, some of the PDFs that are of huge size, you know, and I, I, if I want to share it with different stakeholders, I may want to reduce its size, or I want to perform different verbs and different kind of operations on a PDF document, right? And how to do that? So there is a very easy way of handling all those complex processes using PDF services API. It can be divided in three parts, as you see on this slide, you know, we can create a PDF, we can optimize and we can organize the pages. So you can consider that as a kind of a workflow or, you know, stages. We, we always start with create some creation, right? So we are going to create something. Let's say, assume if you have an HTML document or even if you have a Word document, you might want, you know, to convert that into a PDF document. And probably, let's say, if you have multiple PDF documents, you would want to combine them into a single document. Or probably, you would want to split a PDF document in multiple parts, right? Or maybe, you know, you would want to export it. So we have an API to do that. And then, once it is, we are done with all these things, you know, you might want to optimize this experience, right? Because when we talk about enterprise applications and the PDFs that are being used, right? I mean, some of the PDFs are huge size right it could be in gigabytes or even let's say you know even if a pdf has is it's of size 20 me megabyte it's it's still you know on the higher side and then if you want to uh let's say display or render that pdf right then you need to optimize it so that's where the optimization comes into picture like you can linearize that pdf linearization means like if you have a pdf then if you want to render that pdf let's say on a web page then you would to give an end user a good experience, you know, you will not wait for the PDF to get loaded, you know, on your client system. You would want at least the first page to show up quickly, and then the rest of the pages, you know, can get loaded, you know. Um, so that's linearization, and then you can compress the PDF, you can protect the PDF, right, and you can organize, right. So we, we have all these verbs now. When you, you can do it very easily from Acrobat DC, but what if you want to digitize and automate that processes? If what if you want to add intelligence to that process, that's where you need to use this PDF services API, right? So remember, create, optimize, and organize pages, pages, right? So we have different endpoints to do that. 
right? So let me uh, share my screen and show you. In fact, I'm already sharing my screen. So this is how you can get access to the PDF uh, services API. Uh, you, you need to go to adobe.io website, and then you need to go to get credentials. And then if you want to uh, get a credential for PDF services, go right here. And then you can go to start free trial. And then it will ask you to log in. If you are not logged in, I'm already logged in. So it is not asking me to log in. And then you can click. Now, if you have an existing credential, you can always go to this tab. This guy, go to IO con console and manage your existing credentials. But if you don't have one, then you would want to create a new one, then you need to go to get started. And then once you do there, it will, uh, well, it is asking me to log in. So I'll go ahead and provide my credentials. And then here you can select either PDF Embed API or PDF Services API, right? So here I'm interested in, in fact, both of them. So I'll probably create PDF Services API first, and then I'll move on to PDF Embed API, right? So in the interest of time, I'm not going to uh, go further along with it, right? So, but this is how you need to do this. Provide a PDF Services API, you need to just give it a credentials name, its description, and then uh, you can personalize the code sample. Like if, if, if your background, if, if you come from a Java background, you know, you can use Java, .NET, Node, Python, right? So you have that flexibility available. Likewise, you can do the same for PDF Embed API right here. So you can give it a name, right? And then you need to provide an application domain. Now, this is really important if you're if you are a developer and if you want to try this on your local system, right? So let's say if you have a local server running, running on your system, right? I and mean, if you're trying to consume uh, this client-side API, so PDF Embed is a client-side API. Now, this is important to understand. You know, so there is a thin line between all the APIs that are available under Document Cloud, right? So PDF Embed is the only API that is client-side. The rest of the APIs are server-side, right? So you have a REST endpoint, just consume those APIs, there is a certain set of protocols that you need to follow. Probably, you know, create a, a request and then consume the API and you'll get a response back. Now, one thing to keep in mind is all these APIs are transactional. When, when I talk about the PDF services API, what it means is we do not store customer data, right? We process your request and then we return the file back to you and we are done, right? So. This was an important concept, so I just wanted to you know, make you aware of it. Now, for PDF Embed API, coming back to this, you need to provide a domain here, right? Now, let's say uh, if you're going to uh, try locally, and if you're using any IDE like Eclipse or any other, you know, let's say you're using Java technology or any other technology, so you would want to have that domain whitelisted here. That is the local host. And then once you do that, this link will get enabled, create credential, and it will give you a credential ID. So let me quickly show you this. Let's say developer event. I'll give it a name and domain will be localhost. I'll do create credentials, right? Now it is processing my request and it will return back a client ID. Now, this is what you need to start using PDF Embed API, right? Likewise, you can do the similar thing with PDF uh, services API, but the PDF services API is slightly different because it is server side, right? As I said, remember, PDF embed API is client side API, and remaining rest of all APIs are server side, right? So you need uh, you need to go through the JWT process to get you know the access to those APIs. So I will talk about it shortly. Now, as I said, you know it is create and optimize. These two are really important steps. Now, what are the things that we can do? Let's I'll show you that exciting stuff, you know, uh, from my code base. Oh, I'm opening my clips, right? So let me uh, zoom in a little bit, right? So what I'm going to do is, so this is the I've, uh, configured PDF services API right here. And then I'll expand this, right? Now, let's say if I want to display a P, like a PDF on the web browser, right? So how do how do we go about it, right? I mean, personally, I experience this problem, you know, on a daily basis. When you try to open a PDF file on a web browser, uh, rather than displaying that file on the web browser, it will ask you to download, and that's not a good experience, right? So this is one of the biggest problem that 
this API is going to solve for. And most of our customers or even partners, they rely on some third party libraries to manipulate PDF, to render a PDF on a website. Well, up to some extent, you know, this may uh, bring some success, but those technologies are legacy based technologies, right? They are not upgraded and you might come across uh, some security vulnerability, security issues, you know, with those APIs. And the PDF that you're creating using those third party libraries may not uh, index the PDF, right? So that will hamper the performance when you want to search, perform search on this PDF, right? And then as a developer, let's say if you want to make modifications to a PDF file, you know, you need to go back to the code base and start uh, writing those algorithms, those, you know, changes and you need to, so every time you make, bring, you need to bring some changes to your process, you need to do some hard coding or you need to, you know, uh, make changes to the code, which is not a good experience as a developer because it is going to uh, increase the development time, maintenance and everything, right? So to solve for all those problems, we have the PDF embed API, right? It's, it's actually more than just, you know, rendering a, a PDF file. It gives you the complete control, right? You have an, the flavor of analytics, right? You can render uh, the PDF on browser with all the controls, like you can decide who can download the PDF and who cannot, right? So you can put all those restrictions. So without wasting any time, let me show you. So I'll start with a quick uh, demo of PDF Embed API. Now this is just a simulator, right? I'll show you from my uh, code that is running locally, right? So this on the right pane, it is like a browser, right? And I'm displaying a PDF right here. This is, I mean, it's hard to distinguish whether this is a PDF or a web page, right? And that is the beauty of this API. And you have different modes available. This is the full window, and there is a size container. There is a you know inline mode, and then there is a light box, right? For different use cases, right? So it is device agnostic. It does not matter whether you're trying to render a PDF on a, a computer or on an iPad or on a you know a small screen mobile device. You know it will adapt itself uh, according to the PDF content, and that is the intelligence that Adobe brings in, you know, in this, in, in, in the API, right? So, as I said, it's just more than rendering a PDF document. It is actually a lot of intelligence, you know, that has gone into it. And then you must be wondering how to use that. Let's say if you have a application running on your local system, how to use this? Well, very simple, just few lines of code. You click here, I'll show you, generate a code. I mean, this is what you need, just simply plug in this code to your client application and you're done. All you need is the credential, right? And I showed you how to create a credential. Once you have the credential, then you can very easily do that. And as I said, you know, you have full control, like you can customize it. Let's say here you have a print and download options. I mean, you can take it away like, like this. Now you don't have that. And you can do all these things, you know, on your own. So let me show you. Like that. So my, I'm running this on my system, right? And then what I've done is, let me show you, uh, start with the local, right? Let's say if you have a local file on your system that you want to render on a web browser. And when we say local, you know, that PDF file can reside in a database in binary format, right? Or it is lying somewhere on the third party, uh, third party system, like let's say Amazon, like an S3 bucket, right? So it does not matter in what format you have that PDF, whether it is the actual physical copy of the PDF on your local system or it is in binary format, right? You can render that PDF very beautifully on a web browser, right? So let's say, I'll give you an example. If you are storing the PDF file in SQL database in binary format, then you can simply retrieve that and pass it as a promise in your code. That's it, right? I'll show you how it is done. So. This is the JS file that you need to include, right? And then that's how you feed in your client ID, right? And I showed you how to create that. Now, once you have that client ID, right? And then if you want to uh, display a file, fetch a file from your local system and then uh, display it. So I'm running this locally. I'll show you how it works, right? So this is choose a PDF file, right? Now I'll select a PDF. Let's say I'll select this guy. I'll hit open. Now it has 
it is showing a PDF file that is stored on my local system and it is rendering on this web browser, right? And then I have all these controls that I can, you know, uh, I can, uh, if if needed, I can remove, take take off, you know, all these things from here with all the annotations, everything. And as I said, the best part is we also have the, you know, uh, the flavor of analytics. Like, so there are certain events that gets triggered that you can actually capture and use it to bring intelligence to your uh, application. So let's say if you want to use a chat chatbot, right? So you can utilize those events and data and personalize the user's experience who are visiting your website, right? So let me show you how that uh, event work, right? So I'll quickly show you, right? So I'll use the console of my Firefox, right? Now, if I scroll down, you know, to, to different pages, and if you look at this, you know, these are the events that are getting triggered. So there is a page view event. I'm on page number three. And if I keep scrolling down, right, it will take me to different pages. Now, if I go and look at the console, it is page number seven. Now, if I try to, let's say, print a PDF, right, like this, it will show me this document print command. I mean, there is an event that got get, that got captured. And then now if I try to download a PDF, right, it is also going to capture that. So whatever user is, you know, doing on that PDF file, you can capture all those events and process those events and bring intelligence and personalized experience for the user, right? And that's how you get connected with the users who are visiting your website. This is going to be super helpful in, uh, in expanding your business because if you present something to an end user that's matching up the flavor, that's exactly what you need, right? And likewise, it's not, you know, PDF Embed API has way more features than this. Like, I'll, I'll show you. If you, there is a, there is a, so there is a thing, you know, uh, by default, PDF Embed API, the PDF that you're displaying on the web browser, uh, those are not uh, available for searching. Right? If you search them on Google, you, you will not find them because by default, they are not referred, you know, uh, to the DOM of uh, that HTML page, right? So, but you have control over it. You can actually uh, refer that direct link, you know, to the DOM of that HTML page to make them available, you know, so that you can also search those PDF files, right? So this is like auto link. Like once I called this API, you know, this has called this link and it is displaying this PDF. Likewise, I can, you know, uh, use different PDFs and show them on the web browser. Likewise, I'll show you another interesting thing, right? So I can actually perform uh, crude operations on a, a, a PDF in terms of, let's say, annotations or, so let me show you. So here, if you look at this, like right here, I have, you know, I can change the color like this. <laughs> this is interesting, isn't it? I mean, this is a great feature. And then if I want, I can you know, remove this, like this. And then I can also personalize, you know, this experience. Like, it is John Smith. I can create my own profile. And then it will start saying Sudhanshu Singh. And then I can download this PDF after adding all the uh, comments, and that can be distributed, right? So it is very similar to, you know, uh, when we talk about create, collaborate, and execute, right? So you can create a PDF file, add all the, all the comments and everything, and then you can collaborate with your different stakeholders, you, with the colleagues, right? And then you can mutually work on that PDF file, share it with each other, and then once you have a final version of that PDF created, you know, you, that can be executed on the web, web browser, right? Now, this is how to render a PDF file with full control on a web browser, right? But what about creating that PDF? You know, let's say if you have a Word document, how to convert that into a PDF file? Let's say if you have a PDF, uh, a scanned PDF, right? Then you, you cannot search, perform search on a scanned PDF, right? If you try to do control F, it will not let you do that. So you need to perform the OCR operation. So how, what if you want to make a PDF searchable, right? So we have PDF services API uh, to handle that. And as I said, uh, this is important, you know, so I'll repeat it one more time. So PDF Embed is a client-side API and PDF Services, you know, is a server-side API. So let me show you that now. This is really uh, interesting. So 
I'll go to my uh, code for PDF services SDK, right? So what I'm going to do is these are the different options that are available to me. I can combine a PDF. I can compress. Let me zoom in a little bit all right, so that it is easy for you, all right? So I can perform all these operations. So these are the different verbs that are available. Now, let me show you those here since I talked about it. So let me show you a, first a document of, that I'm going, going to use for this OCR. Now, this is the input file that I'm going to use, right? Now, it's a scan document, right? Now, if I try to uh, search anything on this document, I'll not be able to do that because this is not searchable, right? So let me, let me show you. If I do Control F here, and then let's say there is a keyword in this document outlined, right? If I try to search that outlined, if I hit enter, it will say this is a scanned PDF and cannot be searched. So I need to run text recognition, right? To make it searchable. Now how to do that? So there is an endpoint. I'll show you. All right, so let me come out of this page. And then what I'm going to do is there is an endpoint for OCR. So what I'm going to do is I'll simply run this file. So I've, I'm picking this OCR input file in my code. And then now I'm going to, I'm, I'm expecting the output in this folder, right? So let me remove this. All right. So let's see. OCR PDF. Now it is processing. So it is intelligent enough, you know, uh, and to to read the uh, content, unlock the PDF file, and then it, it will make it searchable, right? So OCR means you are making that PDF searchable, right? And then I should have the output any moment now. So it was quick, right? So now if I uh, try to open this OCR output, and now if I try to do Control F, and if I search for outline, right, it will take me right there, right? So quite easy, right? I mean, to make a, a PDF document searchable, just an endpoint, right? If you have a scanned copy of invoices, right? So, so where this can be used? I mean, that you must be wondering. So let's say if you have a legacy-based system, ERP system, or any system where you have some scanned documents and, you know, tons of documents, like let's say invoices. Let's take an example of invoices, right? So you, if you have a scanned copy of invoices and if you want to, you know, make them searchable so that you can actually perform search in those invoices and look for some keywords, right? And bring some intelligence. Then you can run OCR and then simply uh, add your logic to search for the data, the content that you're looking for. And there is an API to do that. All right, so uh, in the interest of time, let me show you another uh, cool API that is the Compress, right? So likewise, you know, I can, uh, run it simply i'll right click this is my java code and by the way i mean it doesn't have to be java right you can uh develop your application in any technology like java node php python there is no limitation it's an api if i mean this ecosystem is now turning into an api driven completely right so if if there is an api available it means regardless of what technology you use, use. I mean, you, you just need to develop a client that should be capable of uh, posting a request, right? Or maybe if you're using callback or even, you know, kind of webhook, then it should be capable of accepting a get and post request, right? So as long as you have a client application that can make a HTTP call to a REST endpoint, you're good. So let me run this, uh, compress a PDF file. Right, so I'm expecting this output to land here. And then what it will do is it is going to reduce the size of the PDF document, right? And let me uh, show you the PDF that I used uh, to compress. And by the way, you know, uh, when I'm, I use this compress API, it is going to reduce the size of the PDF uh, without compromising on, you know, its uh, quality. So that is the uh, best part of it, right? So let me see. I'll show you. This is the uh, compressed PDF output like this. Right. If you look at this, you know, it's, it's still beautiful. I mean, you have those images, tables, everything intact. It did not hamper its quality at all. 
and this is the input document let me show you the input document as well all right so there you go so this is the output document after compress and now if i open this side by side can you see this it's hard to make a difference i mean from our naked eyes we cannot uh, we cannot distinguish whether it's the compressed pdf or the original one of you know of a bigger size if i scroll down a little bit if you look at this image right the see i'll switch toggle between these two pdf this is the input one and this is the output one no difference at all even in the quality of the image right now just imagine uh, the kind of use cases that we can handle you know, with this the compressed pdf if you are if you are into content writing if you are creating and managing a lot of pdf documents right some of the pdfs are going to be of huge size and you need storage to store those pdf documents and storage i mean i won't say it's very costly but still it will come at at certain cost right so you can reduce that investment you can reduce that cost by using the compress api so before storing the pdf you just need to you know uh, com compress its size and that's you're done likewise you can perform all these operations you can uh, create a pdf right you can create a pdf from word document from an html from a ppt right so let me show you a ppt one for example you know, i have a ppt file and then what i'm going to do is i'll quickly run my code and then it is actually uh, creating converting a ppt into a pdf document right and this is a ppt by the way let me show you right and then i'll show you the output now it is processing it should get completed any moment there you go so this is the out output file and it is in a pdf format so let me open this i'll show you so this is a pdf that got converted uh, so powerpoint presentation you know we just turned up into a pdf file like this right so likewise uh, you can use all these verbs and operations that that are part of pdf uh, services api and it's not limited to just creating a pdf as i said you know you can optimize a pdf right so you can export a pdf you can extract pdf you can insert pages you can lean linearize right i mean as i said you know if you have a huge size pdf and if you want to render that on a web document right so let's say if you we talked about pdf service and pdf embed api and if you want to use both of these api in conjunction you know then you can do that beautifully let's take an example of if you have a huge pdf huge size pdf then it might take some time to load on the web page right so you can call this linearize uh, this endpoint then what will happen it, it is going to optimize that pdf and then once you uh, try to render that pdf on a web page using the pdf embed api then it will load the first page of the pdf in a very you know very quickly with a very you know good turnaround time and then the rest of the pages will get loaded in background right so to an end user it will give a really you know a good impression because it it is going to create into a good user experience because uh, you just loaded a huge size pdf on the web browser without uh, you know taking much much of a time right so these uh, these were the two api that i wanted to uh, bounce off and these are great technologies please uh, try them out and uh, you can go to adobe.io to understand more about them right you can simply go to adobe.io and create a credential and get along with it so that's all i wanted to cover today we are right on time uh, thank you for joining my session